get uh, another piece of rather unusual <coughs> equipment. This uh, what looks like uh, uh, remains, <laughs> um, obviously not working remains of uh, a rangefinder unit, uh, uh, some sort of uh, military uh, military model. It has. Uh, uh, Pretty good optics, and I believe it also has uh, some of the um, the laser uh, assembly still intact. That's why I got it. So let's see what I can find inside. If I take it apart. I just need to get rid of the. Uh, of the flex cables that are attached to this. Closer look at this. Oh, now this is very interesting. It says um, uh, there is a uh, what looks uh, is like a piece of alumina. Yes, uh, I believe it is a piece of alumina uh, with um, or maybe some kind of other plastic. Look to me as alumina. Um, it's very light. And there is a hybrid, uh, shielded hybrid, uh, um, I see in the middle, uh, which is, uh, oh, you can see, it's uh, made by a company called ARX. I believe this is the, the brand name because there is another um, a, a similar unit here also says ARX so it must be a company or um, and uh, the indication here there's a, there is a series of uh, of indicators on this side uh, LEDs um, and right on on the body of it it says um, dash 2 20 kilometers uh, dash 1 10 kilometers and dash for 40 kilometers that's four zero kilometers um well that's quite impressive so this unit uh, when it was uh, uh, working it's capable of um, measuring distance up to 40 kilometers so i found that um, i was able to uh, to remove the external adjusting part uh, the focus this is used to adjust the focus <clears throat> in a viewfinder and uh, uh, there is a part the optical uh, lens uh, which has a reticle on it it's kind of floating inside and, and, and appears to be broken so what it looks like is this this uh, this is the <clears throat> this must be a receiving part aside uh, for the uh, uh, for the rangefinder or perhaps um, and then uh, a, <coughs> a signal itself, the uh, the returning signal uh, does not come. Uh, well, obviously, parts of it are coming into the into the um, the viewer's eye. And uh, but there is a, a a prism right here. Uh, this is a, a triangular prism that goes into another uh, lens, and I don't see the component it was shining on. And uh, what gives me <coughs> a hope that this is the the receiving part that uh, um, used to detect the uh, the laser signal reflected back from the uh, distant objects uh, uh, located underneath this um, uh, flex cable, and you see it's been attached, uh, it's soldered on, soldered to the uh, to the body. Um, in, in uh, uh, about nine or ten places, I was able to remove uh, what I believe is the part that uh, used 
which contains the laser that's, uh, that's, uh, that sends the signal out. So I'm going to take a look at that. I might not be able to disassemble it right away because I need a special... Um, it looks like I need a special keys in order to uh, to unscrew these rings. So I need to design, uh, find some way to, um, uh, to find a key that fits into these notches. And uh, same story here and not just here and here, so I can remove the lens and see what's inside. The similar um, similar rings uh, appear to be used in order to um, in order to amount this uh, uh, receiving probably uh, avalanche photodiode right here. 24.6 is that microfarad? Millifarad? It's pretty big. So now I have a better idea of when this this particular unit was made. It's very old. Um, the date code on this uh, and this I believe uh, operational amplifier is uh, 86 is 15th week of 80, uh, 86 and that kind of matches uh, what I see on this capacitor 8507 8615 so this unit must have been made sometime around year uh, 86 87 well, the assembly itself suggests it's 90s, but um, it's a specialized high power uh, power supply circuits. Those uh, these circuits uh, often look um, kind of outdated. Uh, even right now, you can you can find uh, this uh, this sort of a construction in some power supplies that are uh, shipped uh, with modern equipment so I wasn't entirely sure so here I was able to disassemble this uh, uh, what I correctly guess is the sensor board if I pull it out is I see this interesting unit it has a uh, you know, focus. Focus. So it's uh, it's what I believe is an uh, avalanche photo diet with. Um, signal conditioning circuit and all that stuff <laughs> kind of afraid that I'm gonna going to uh, ruin my cheap Chinese screwdriver <laughs> but this is how I figure I can uh, disassemble this device without I'm buying extra special keys. Um. Ta -da. Um, the glass was broken inside and it was um, sort of smooshing around inside the body and it left uh, a lot of tiny glass particles on all the parts okay so let's look at uh, uh, the the laser uh, which is this is what I found inside <coughs> this uh, uh, plastic uh, uh, box uh, which is uh, this is a very light material uh, looks like alumina and also uh, it's been uh, covered with something rather soft, uh, some, almost like a charcoal. 
uh, this is for thermal protection because um, as on on the top section here, uh, it's this is the, the flash tube, uh, negative uh, positive supply for a flash tube, and uh, here's the interesting thing. So um, and this is this is a ruby laser. Uh, that's that's a, a ruby rod. It looks kind of white, but if I look at uh, at uh, um, into the, from from the top, and I mean I can see it's it's uh, it has this uh, strong sort of uh, a ruby color uh, characteristics. So it's under certain lights, it doesn't look like ruby at all. <laughs> um, This is an interesting thing here. Uh, the trigger for this flash tube, uh, it I think it's about 20 kilovolt uh, pulse, comes uh, from this uh, a coil, and I will talk about uh, what I've done in order to reverse engineer the triggering circuit for this. So it comes right in there, and it connects to. Uh, so it has a little, uh, a little hole in uh, this is this is this is a little tube. So basically, this is a connector, and it goes. If you, if I put it in, it, there is a needle that goes into that tube. So that connects the output of this uh, uh, coil uh, to uh, a brass pin. Well, the pin itself is protected, and it's uh, it's been filled with. Um, uh, non-conductive uh, silicon, which kind of have a, a yellowish color. I think it's yellowish because it's it's been uh, under a high voltage pressure. So, so what happens here when this uh, 20, 10, 20 kilovolt uh, pulse comes from uh, through this tube, and this this is what's used to trigger uh, this uh, the flash lamp. And then when it's triggered, it, that generates uh, enough light that goes through this glass. And I can see a glass. Uh, there's a piece of glass here. I'm not sure what kind of glass it is. Let me clean it up. It doesn't really matter. And then it excites this uh, this uh, ruby rod here. And that uh, results in, in a uh, laser pulse being generated, and here's it comes out from here that way. I believe this end is is a mirror, and then so it, it shines into the the collimating lens right here. So you see this this uh, this part mates with this. Uh, so here, here, this uh, output of this laser goes right into this collimating lens, and it out outside comes right out. So this must be. This is definitely not eye safe, or I mean, it will take your eye right off. I think this is quite powerful laser, <coughs> and that's um, explains the the forty kilometer range of this. Uh, of this range meter. Now let's look at the uh, firing circuit for this uh, uh, for this uh, flash uh, uh, bulb. Uh, here is a, uh, the output coil that generates the pulse signal. Uh, it comes. Uh, let me see. Show it again. So basically, this one connects right here, uh, like this. Um, and that coil is been driven uh, from this board. So as you can see, I I've spent significant efforts trying to reverse engineer this board, and I uh, I had to carefully uh, cut most of the components out in order to f find out. Uh, what these are, and also this board is is covered by uh, 
this reddish uh, tinted epoxy, which makes it even harder to to see what kind of components that is. Well, it, this is it, it. You can you can see this this uh, uh, epoxy is translucent, but still. Uh, some of the components were mounted upside down, so I, I couldn't see what exactly these are. And um, <clears throat> some are obvious, like these resistors. Um, I believe all the brown ones are resistors, and uh, this one is our inductors. There's some magic about these inductors, uh, I'll talk about later. Um, this uh, a coil was connected like this and um, after some reverse engineering efforts I, this is the, the schematics that I came up with for uh, for the firing circuit uh, let me zoom out a little bit um, so this firing circuit is based on, on um, this tyristor, uh, which is S2600M. Uh, most of the components in this board uh, were uh, some kind of... Uh, um, mil they're not very... Uh, they're quite common components. I was easy, uh, uh, was able to find the data sheets for them very easily and uh, the only the only difference is that uh, many of these were um, had uh, military codes on them uh, saying well this is for extended temperature or something like this uh, although there are not no magic components uh, that I found on this board uh, here's the tyristor uh, that's uh, used as the main uh, firing a uh, triggering tyristor it's connected for this uh, inductor right here uh, let me see uh, that's the larger inductor I have but uh, I was trying to use decode so this this also indicates oh, well okay so the tolerances on this uh, are our military which indicated by this uh, a uh, silver band um, on on the terrister, but when I try to measure this uh, the value of this terrister using my uh, uh, LCR meter, I was the the results didn't match at all. I mean, I tried to uh, or something. I was even suspecting something wrong with my LCR meter, but nothing wrong. All the components, smaller and larger values. Um, that uh, I got from DGK clearly marked um, for exact match and this it, the, for this uh, um, for, uh, <coughs> for for both of the inductors that I can see here uh, L3 and L1 I found that uh, the values mismatch by about a hundred well go finger so this one according to my LCR meter is uh, 1.7 uh, uh, Micro Henry, although uh, my attempt to decode this uh, shows it should be about uh, 200 uh, 30 uh, Micro Henry, so not sure about that. So, <clears throat> so this is the this is the coil. Say input one, input two. It has a um, this output. It had a, a a diode for um, I don't know if, if should I call it fast acting diode because it's not really fast. It it um, reverse reaction time is about uh, two. Uh, microseconds. Um, I mean, I've seen much faster, but this one is rated for thousand volts. This, this, the dial that was here. It's um, it's a 
it's quite a, a nice uh, reliable device uh, also um, approved for use in uh, airspace um, this is to prevent uh, the, the reverse current after the, um, the, the coil has been fired obviously uh, let's see how it's connected so <clears throat> I believe that this uh, orange uh, wire here uh, coming out of this pulse this is where we have, we have connected a uh, supply that provides uh, negative voltage and it goes through two resistors, uh, 100k resistors um, um, these are high voltage uh, resistors as well and then um, it's protected by two diodes I am not quite sure why this diode is connected this way but I have to figure it out so this is the capacitor which is the C1 uh, capacitor um, so I believe this circuit right here used to charge this capacitor to a certain voltage and then uh, at some point afterwards uh, this uh, thyristor is then turned on and um, that results in, in a negative current uh, flowing through this primary which is uh, relatively uh, fewer turns than the secondary and uh, by generating this very fast uh, pulse right here uh, secondary uh, we will see uh, a sharp 20 kilovolt or 10 kilovolt pulse on the output of this uh, of this coil um, coming from from this um, this is something similar to what you would see in uh, for example uh, design for ignition coils in the small uh, boat engines and, and things like that um, this Thyristor is driven by another thyristor 2N uh, 3028. Uh, this is also uh, a very uh, nice, uh, fast uh, switching thyristor, and there are lots of um, passive components are used around it. I think this is to as uh, either filtering or um, just to to make sure I, I believe that uh, we have a right shape of the pulls uh, to trigger this thyristor well I know that, that um, I mean I, I once uh, quite recently I used uh, a component that uh, exclusively designed to drive a thyristors uh, and uh, by the way uh, most of these components are made by uh, uh, micro semi and they still still make them I don't know they don't have a price or anything and you can't find them on uh, uh, most of the um, supplier sites like uh, DGK so I believe those are uh, specialty components that are quite old and uh, used uh, exclusively either to for uh, newer boards or as a replacement of older boards uh, in let's say uh, airspace or some quite conservative <coughs> in this respect uh, industries where uh, verified using verified design is more important than uh, trying to uh, use something new and unverified um, that second thyristor is driven by uh, a low uh, voltage uh, NPN transistor right here this is uh, a 2N uh, 930 also made by uh, micro semi and this the the base uh, the the base of this transistor is uh, AC coupled with uh, external connection P1 uh, I think this the optics inside this um, the, the, the collimating lens 
and optics uh, inside this assembly are still being intact and uh, should be uh, working fine so I'll probably uh, um, just uh, avoid touching this for now um, and uh, this is how this is how this uh, laser can can be attached right here so the only thing I need right now uh, to see if this uh, this laser is still working uh, I don't see reason why not um, I'm going to keep this uh, this uh, this uh, triggering coil uh, probably can find another one like this but uh, uh, this is definitely it should be it should be fine because I try to uh, measure the resistance it, it it's not broken it's not it's not burnt or anything it has um, uh, high uh, secondary resistance and I believe uh, and low uh, a primary I think seems uh, seems right about this uh, this coil so the only thing I need is to uh, f uh, build an alternative uh, uh, triggering and power supply um, uh, circuit for uh, for this uh, a ruby laser here uh, f well not for ruby laser for the for the flash lamp uh, in this uh, ruby laser and the flash lamp itself doesn't uh, doesn't really look to me uh, as something special either so uh, even if it doesn't work I should be able to find a similar uh, flash bulb uh, uh, to replace it so um, I think uh, there is a fun to be had with this uh, uh, with this laser so as I mentioned before I just need to uh, need to find the uh, uh, the good uh, uh, replacement for uh, the firing circuit uh, for this uh, trigger and power supply for the uh, for the flash bulb uh, obviously using modern components uh, perhaps I can use a uh, Terroristers uh, or LGBTs are even better, and uh, since the size is not an issue uh, for me, shouldn't be a problem.